Thank you everyone so much for joining us for our September Alumni University, Latinas in Architecture. My name is Joe Volan and I work in the Advancement Office at Illinois Tech. Uh, I'm joined by four wonderful people, four wonderful architects, uh, and four brilliant individuals. So thank you all for coming. Uh, a couple housekeeping notes. This session is being recorded and will be available at a later date on our website, iit.edu slash alumni university. If you have any questions throughout the session, please enter them in the chat function and we'll have time at the end for, for questions, hopefully. Our first speaker, Gabriella Seferin, received her Bachelor of Architecture and Master of Structural Engineering from Illinois Tech. Gabby started working at McDonald's as a structural engineer after graduation in their U.S. restaurant design group. 23 years later, she has designed thousands of restaurants in the United States and has remodeled and deployed multiple initiatives into these restaurants. Now as a project manager in their global diversity, equity, and inclusion team, she supports the McDonald's DEI strategy and employees in their corporate functions. Our, our second speaker, uh, Patricia Saldana Netke, is the founder and principal of Chicago-based Urban Works, an acclaimed architecture, planning, and interior design firm. The firm has won over 45 local and national design awards for projects, including the UNO Veterans Memorial Campus, West Pullman Senior Housing, Big Bold Visionary Ground Plains for Gary, Indiana, La Casa Student Housing, and Galewood School. Our third speaker, Alicia Ponce, under Alicia's direction, the firm, her firm provides architectural services, community engagement, and sustainability consulting for projects throughout the Midwest and Mexico. Her expertise and passion to design healthy buildings and equitable, equitable communities support many clients in creating architecture that is ambitious, thoughtful, and happy. AP Monarch provides these services to a diverse group of sectors that includes commercial, higher education, civic, healthcare, and nonprofits. And our fourth speaker, Claudette Soto, is the president and CEO of Bezo Limited, a construction management owner representative firm in the Chicagoland area, whose mission is to elevate equitable procurement and meaningful minority and women owned businesses participation while delivering projects on time and on budget. She has been working in the construction management, architectural and engineering field for over 19 years. In 2001, while an undergraduate student at Illinois Tech, she started a grassroots organization named VAMOS that introduced STEAM fields and the language of higher education to underserved middle school students. Thank you for joining us again. I will now turn it over to our speakers. Thank you, Jos. Um, it's wonderful to see you all and kicking off Hispanic Heritage Month, Latino Heritage Month. And thank you, Claudette, for putting this together and providing the space to continue the conversation for Latinas in architecture. As you see here on, my, on the screen in my background, um, the book uh, was launched in October of last year. And I had the honor of having the three of you being co-authors sharing your stories, becoming a little bit vulnerable perhaps, but elevating Latinas in architecture and in the building industry. And it's been, you know, a year, not even a, a year yet. And we have won, well, no, in 2020, we launched it. And we have won the, uh, an, a very prestigious award for the International Latino awards it won the highest award the gold medal and and it's because of you it's because of you sharing your stories of uh, being a latina in this architecture profession so i am um, excited to talk to you today about your role about your journey a little bit of your journey 
and where you are today. So, um, you know, I'd like to start off with uh, Gabi and the three of you can answer the question is, you know, what has it been like ever since you've, um, now that the, your story is published, it's out there, what has it been like for you to put your story out there? Because typically we don't share our story, right? We just get out there and work and, and live life. And, and sometimes things may appear easy to others, right? But now your story is out there. Can you share a little bit about what that's been like for you? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Alicia. Um, so since the story's out there, um, for those that know me, I've always been rather quiet and shy. Uh, getting the story out there and being vulnerable and having people know a lot more about me has actually given, like, empowered me to speak up more. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm giving more talks. I'm asked to go to different companies to talk about, you know, their DEI uh, path, what we're doing at McDonald's. Um, and then just also have more confidence in myself. So it, it was very uh, cathartic for me getting mm -hmm. it all out there. But I, I think I have found it very rewarding in just my personal life being more empowered to speak just you know everybody knows who I am now you know like if you read the story you know where I come from you know the hardships that I went through um so it's not anything that I have to hide anymore or you know to feel ashamed it's actually giving me a lot you know to speak up for everybody else and uh help people along the way yes thank you for sharing that uh, Claudette what about you what has it done for you? Um, I think it's done a lot in terms of not only uh, putting my story out there, but hearing everyone else's. <clears throat> like I've known a lot of the, you know, the co-authors for many years, and I would have never imagined that they had the same obstacles that I had. I thought that I was alone. I thought that it was um, unique to me and it was nice to comforting to hear, but at the same time, a little upsetting, right? <laughs> um, that we were we were experiencing um, similar things, um, but it's also pushed me even more. Like I have been mentoring, you know, first generation university students for years, but it pushed me even more to start hearing what their stories are, and to see that how else can we better this industry and what additional ch you know changes are needed. So it's been a beautiful experience and. I gave all my staff members a copy of the book and I think it's just cool to give something that, that you've written to the next yeah. generation. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it has been very empowering, just like Abby said, to share the story, not just for uh, you know us as individually, but also for others and saying, you know, I'm not the only one. What about you, Pat? What is it? Yeah, like exactly. I mean, one of the best things uh, is how many uh, younger women have approached me and now they feel like they know me. So one came up to me and said, I grew up in the back of the arts and I'm interested in architecture or even, um, you know, and, and thank you for the intro about myself and the firm. But one of the things I'm the most proud of is I've been teaching at, at, uh, Illinois Tech at IIT, the College of Architecture. It'll be 10 years now. And seeing the evolution uh, of the quantity of Latinas studying architecture. Mm. And as, you know, Gabby mentioned, kind of the, the they're emboldened now and more empowered to, uh, you know, to, to ask for what they think they need or the changes or that there should be more you know, Latinx professors, et cetera, whatever, whatever is needed. And I feel that this, this book has helped move the pendulum and that's hard to do. Um, and I, that's probably why I won the award. I, I think I'm just so proud that, that we've been part of it. And that Alicia, that you, you were the leader to, to think that, but why don't we do this? And I don't know if you even knew how, you know, how big of a movement and initiative it was um, but that's what I feel is to me just um, 
you know, the most inspiring thing is how many, how many women have read it and, mm. and now connect with it. I mean, that, that's really what a, a book should do. And, uh, and, and that's, that's been great. Yeah, no, I, I did not have any idea <laughs> what this would turn into. I think you were one of the, my first calls, um, you know, this book came out of because of Arquitina, the, the nonprofit that we, we are all a part of now. And I called you and I, I probably, did I call you all three of you? And because I, I said, you know, it was out of frustration and Claudette, you said it, you know, you felt alone, right? And it, it was out of frustration that this, in that this profession that, that we love, right? To build and design felt lonely. And, you know, how do we move ahead? How do we navigate through the profession? And more importantly, um, how do we become licensed? It's such a such a long journey, can be confusing, very emotional, and um, you know, it's a roller coaster. So I had no idea, but here we are sharing our stories. Um, Pat, you mentioned, you know, now you're seeing more students, you know, in the programs and just to just to share a quick glimpse of, I was curious if we could talk about our first day at the university, at college, you know, coming from, maybe talk mm -hmm. about where you came from, the high school you came from, and then going into college. What was that like? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I still... I still remember I went to um, I grew up in back of the arts in, in south side of Chicago and I went to an all girls Catholic high school Maria high school so a bit sheltered uh, I I knew that that girls and women could do anything because that's that's I was surrounded by females and nuns who were teachers and other females and I loved art and science and physics and uh, when I went to um, Downstate U of I Champaign, um, it, it was it was scary. Um, it was scary. I had traveled often to Mexico, but uh, nowhere beyond just just Mexico, the U.S. and Mexico. And so when my parents came and um, you know left me in the dorms, and I saw the the bunk beds, and I thought. I'm going to live in this tiny room with one other person. Um, but, you know, when they left, uh, I was homesick. I was so homesick for weeks. And luckily, because my parents could drive two and a half hours and see me, they would come see me often. But um, I think, it, you know, as, as Latinas, there is uh, such a, at least for me, a tight sense of family that it, that it was very, really challenging to, to go to a school where I had to be away from, from family. Um, but, you know, I found that there were organizations that um, were very supportive at the time, those very active women in architecture organization. And, um, you know, jumping now to, to IIT, as I mentioned, teaching there, just seeing the changes in the 10 years, um, there is now reignited the um, uh, IIT Arquitecto student chapter. So, I mean, that's a, a huge plus where everyone can feel welcome. And um, the big difference is, uh, I you know, there was pride before, but now the pride can be an open prideness about our backgrounds and what we've accomplished in our community. Um, but, you know, definitely it's, it, it was challenging. It was challenging to, to get through all those different stages of being away from family. And then once you graduate, you know, the next steps. And as you said, at least you have a very lonely. Um, and uh, that's what this book has really done is connected all the dots across the nation so that no no one feels lonely that they know that there's someone there they may be in a different state um but but everyone's there to help each other out so so it, it it's it's been fabulous and not just the you know support system but also seeing the tremendous amount of talent just you know in technology and construction management in you know in corporations and corporate architecture just seeing all that intelligence and talent mm -hmm. uh, that that's what's been um you know even more inspiring yeah. Um, what about you, Claudette, and going into IIT? And I was wondering, too, if either you or Gabby, how much you knew about Mies. 
I don't know anything about me. <laughs> I didn't know who Mies was. So I went to uh, Mother Macaulay High School. And again, it's an all girls Catholic high school. And during that time, it was actually 2000 girls when I was there. So it was very easy to get lost in the numbers. I actually found out about IIT because I was walking to gym and there was a, a book with all the courses left on the table. And I picked it up and I saw that IIT had architectural engineering. And in my mind, um, architectural engineering combined both of the worlds that I wanted to go into. It incorporated design and it also incorporated like the engineering portion. So I signed up for the, for the college and um, got accepted. I met with my um, professor who was also my advisor, Dr. De Santiago in the civil and architectural engineering department. And I told him how excited I was that I'd be able to do architecture and engineering. And I remember he was typing away. He stopped, uh, turned around and looked at me and told me, Claudette, that's not what it means. And I said, what do you mean that's not what it means? <laughs> and he said, well, what is it that you wanna do? And I said, well, I wanna do design, but I also wanna do engineering. He's like, well, I'm going to have you apply right now to the College of Architecture, and you're going to also get a minor in structural engineering, mm. and this is the path that you're going to take. And I was freaking out because I said, I have to apply to another college? Like, what's going to happen to me? So um, I was accepted, started the next day, had to get all of my supplies. I had never drafted before in my life. I remember, you know, my parents um, dropping me off. We actually pulled in front of Crown Hall in the, in the roadway. It wasn't even like, you know, I'm going to drop you off on the street. I want to pull up right in front of, which is like the rear, right? We're going to pull up to Crown Hall with all of your stuff and you're going to, to start. Had no idea what, what it was about. I remember I was struggling with my Mayline, the Borco, like everything, right? And my, my case of supplies and this young man comes down and he's like, oh, let me help you. And he grabs all the things, takes me to, to the studio, which he was also a part of. He was also a freshman. And I just remember looking at everyone's boxes and their supplies and they were so worn. They were so old. And I'm like, ew, like why is everybody's stuff so old? <laughs> But it's because they knew they had been going to drafting classes and they knew about architecture for years. Like they had that exposure in high school. Were there more which, um, Latinos in there or? There you... were. I, I want to say that we had um, a total of five Latinos in our class. Mm -hmm. I think there was only um, one other Latina and the rest were all um, male. Mm -hmm. And I started taking out my supplies. And I didn't know what half of the things were. And the person, you know, sitting next to me told me how competitive the program was and that if I didn't know what those things were, that I would never make it. So it was a very bumpy ride for me, beginning. Um, it's, it's very difficult, as, as Gabby can attest to as well, to have your major in architecture and then your minor in structural engineering and then going off and doing your master's degree. It's a lot. But, you know, I did it. I, I tried to ignore those voices of the telling me that I couldn't do it and tried to focus on the, on the end goal. Hmm. What about you, Gabby? What was it like that first day for you? And did you know who Mies was? <laughs> I did not know who Mies was. Um, so I grew up in Little Village, but I went to uh, Whitney Young High School. So it was a, a magnet school, um, very diverse. When I was there, it was um, like 80% diverse, uh, if not more. Um, so going to IIT was a little bit of a culture shock in the other direction. It was you know, a lot um, <clears throat> less diverse. Uh, I will say that my um, freshman year as an architecture student, I did see a lot more Latinos than Claudette. Uh, we had a huge international population, so they weren't necessarily from the U.S. There was, I would say, at least half a dozen of us from the U.S., but most were from uh, Puerto Rico, you know, El Salvador, Ecuador. They, you know, so it was the 
uh, it was different because now I was having to speak Spanish to all of them where, you know, going to school, it was speaking English. Um, but from uh, Whitney Young, I did have some drafting classes. So I knew what some of the, the, the <laughs> things in my art bin were, but it was not as, um, I was not as proficient on, on all, what all of that did because I walked in and everything was laid out on my desk at school. It wasn't like I had to set things up. So it was a little bit hard to like, okay, how do you put the main line in and what does this other thing do? And well, you know, so it was a little <laughs> bit of, of um, hard to get through that. Um, but again, it was, it was, our, our class was very tight um, and it, we, we all kind of just helped each other. Um, mm -hmm. going through a dual degree, living at home was another hardship. Um, mm -hmm. I started off living at home for two years because, you know, my parents were like, no, we live in the city. You're not going to go live on campus. Um, so it was hard when everybody was, you know, working together at crown hall. Um, I did not get that, um, because I would have to go home. And, you know, the most mm -hmm. devastating thing you can hear as a freshman going through architecture school is when you stay up all night working on something and your parents, you know, get up the next morning and you didn't sleep. And they're like, that's all you got done? <laughs> it was like, <laughs> they didn't understand, you know, like you're drawing all night and everything is got to be like so precise. They didn't get it. You know, you, you should have been finished. You stayed up all night. Um, I shared a room with three, with my two sisters and we lived, you know, our room was up in the attic. My parents' room was down below. So I had to make sure like I had everything I needed so that I wouldn't be walking around and waking them up. Cause then my mother would come up and she's like, what are you doing still up? Um, so my first year was a little hard. I, I, I dealt with it for two years and then I finally sat them down and said, you know, I can't do this anymore. I need to go on campus. Mm -hmm. Um, it made it easier to work together with uh, some of the, the other students. Uh, but it was also easier in the sense that sometimes I just needed to go back to the room to work and be by myself. My roommate was also an architecture student and she'd be gone all night, you know, at the studio. So I had the whole room to myself and I was able to, you know, stay up and nobody would wake up the next morning and say, that's all you got done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up you know that's part of uh, our stories and if, if one thing if there's one common thread in the stories 100% is family you know we, we all talk about our families um, and part of being a Latina in architecture is explaining for you know a lot of us explaining this to our parents because um, this is the uh, for many of us we are the first in the family to choose this profession to go to college and and then you're and then it's a profession or uh, when you're in school you're up all night right and uh, especially during those studio years and so we do have to explain that part and and that that's just part of the journey apart from you know we want to study we want to do our, our work but we have to explain every step to our parents, to our family members as well. Um, and the other thing you that you brought up, and I, and I was going to ask you about. Um, Claudette said, you know, shutting those voices um, down, those negative voices. Um, through, and it happens to all of us, whether we're in school or at work in our profession this imposter syndrome as, as a Latina in architecture, um, where we're less than 1% in the US of licensed professionals. Um, sometimes, you know, we hear things, we, we tell ourselves things. And one of the questions for me for that I had for you is, how do you shut that off? First of all, do you experience it? And how do you shut it off? And how do you, um, what advice do you give to others that experience that? And we'll start with um, Pat. Yeah, good question. So, I mean, I I have to say, I mean, my my biggest role models are my parents, and um, neither were architects, but they were always supportive. 
Um, they did say, uh, like, why, why are you up all night? Uh, those kind of questions. But, um, you know, they, they, they didn't question too much, you know, as to like, don't do it as much or, or anything negativity, but, um, but, you know, I think it is, it is hard to shut those voices. Uh, for me, it was always because I knew why I wanted to be an architect. Um, I knew that I wanted to be an architect because where I grew up, I knew that, that we deserved better. Um, I love the back of the yards. It's a great neighborhood, you know, with great families, but I knew that there could be uh, better um, places and public spaces and that the buildings could be renovated comparatively to other neighborhoods. Um, so, you know, when I saw that there wasn't enough investment comparatively to other neighborhoods, I was on a mission. So that's what really kept me going. Like you could hear someone say, you know, what, you know, why are you doing that? Or, uh, you know, I, I, and I, I heard it many times when I wanted to start my own office of uh, they saying like, you have a good paying job. You're working in a great firm. Why would you, why, why would you risk that? So that was the biggest time is knowing that, that I just, I wanted to, to do more and I had a bigger mission. So that really is what, you know, kept me going. And it still does because, you know, there, there's still inequities uh, in, in the city. There's still a lot of work to do to get parity all the way across. And, um, you know, it won't end, you know, when I'm gone, but, the, you know, there's, as long as there are more people in the next generation that are doing it, that really is, you know, what, what keeps me going. So it's just for me, you know, they say that if you, um, you know, if you lead your life with, you know, a purpose and a mission, I mean, that really is it. You know, and that's for all of us. I mean, we we have a larger purpose and mission. It's not just a job and a career. And that's what really keeps us going. And it's hard to explain that to to others that may not have gone through what we we have gone through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, why what is it that drives us to to get here? Mm -hmm. and just turning off all the noise because you, I mean you connected to because being in your neighborhood and seeing the inequities and the disinvestment, and that's mm -hmm. what that's what drove you. And I think that's amazing. And, and that's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was, um, uh, na you know, nature, being connected mm -hmm. to nature and being respectful to the environment and um, starting a practice that focuses on that. Um, and so I had to, I had to start it because I wasn't, I was raising my hand and uh, the places that I've worked and, and it just wasn't, for me, it wasn't fast enough, mm -hmm. but, um, Gavi, I'd like to go to you and talk about what are, what are the ways or advice that you have for imposter syndrome and just getting, just getting into getting out of that mindset. Yeah. So I think, you know, we, we all experience it. Um, I recently went through um, like an inclusive leadership class and it was really helpful in the exercises that it went through, uh, you know, list out all, all your strengths, what makes you different, you know, and a lot of it was the things that <laughs> normally you would say like, oh, you know, I'm Latina, I'm a licensed architect, you know, like they were all the things that made me, me, but were all the things that I was insecure of. Those are all my strengths. I bring that diverse thought. I bring that, you know, that, um, the, the, just keeping everybody else in mind when we're putting things together. Like, you know, it's not just about me, it's about everybody else. Having that, that conscious thought of, how do we, be, how are we being more inclusive or how do we make this more inclusive? Um, so it was going through that exercise that really helped me like even get more power from it. It's like, oh, everything that is me is, is, is like the good part that makes yes. me stand out. I love that. It, it definitely is. And I came to that realization too. And, and it's just like, all of these things that maybe sometimes we've been taught that are wrong or different, or those are our strengths. And that's yeah. why, again, this book is so powerful 
because it's every single co-author um, empowering who they are, where they came from and where they are and where they're going. It's yeah. just and been- we're taught, And we're taught not to brag. Like, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Now what? Yeah, you know, that's kind of how we were brought up. That it's like, okay, that's good. Now what? What are you gonna do next? It's like, don't don't uh, rest on your laurels. But now <laughs> it's you know, there's a lot that I've already done. Like, I need to share that so that others can see it's achievable. Exactly. And what about you, Claudette? I think you know, being in the construction management owner rep world, we see things, um, we experience things a little differently. I think we get a lot of um, like microaggressions and also just blatant aggression that a lot of people who are only in the office really don't, you know, experience. Um, I'm always questioned on every, you know, decision that I make or recommendation that I make, or they tell me, you know, well, that's not how it's done. When in fact, I know that it, it is how it's done, right? Like I've been in this industry for over um, 20 years. And to early on, I wished um, that I could just wear all of my degrees on me, you know, as if it would be some sort of a shield to say, I have an undergraduate degree in architecture. I have a master's degree in structural engineering. You know, I've, I've learned so many different facets of the, of the fields. I felt that I had to always be prepared. So where others may be operating at, I don't know, let's say 80%, I was operating at 120 because I wanted to make sure that I had the answer. And that's also like a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to put on ourselves. Um, I've come to, to realize that it's, it's okay to just be me, right? With my, with my perfections, with my imperfections, like whatever it is that I bring to the table, it's enough. And we're, we're also often taught that as Latina women that, you know, um, to reserve our comments, right? Or to act a certain way, to not be what's deemed aggressive. As if, as if expressing your viewpoint is some sort of like aggression, right? Um, and sometimes it's not very well received being on the construction sites and being knowledgeable and, and letting people know that you are knowledgeable and that they have to, they have to do what you're asking them to do. So it's very challenging. And I've tried to create like a safe space in the, the company that I started to where my, my staff members know that if they experience anything out there that they can come back here and we can talk about it and we can, and we can let it go, right? I've, I've come to the realization that a lot of those aggressions are because of the insecurities of the individuals who are dishing it out. That it's not about me, it's not about my competency but it's actually about their insecurities. So that's been very empowering. And I try to remind my, my staff of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. You know, it's about their, that's, that's definitely the approach that I take, you know, is, is when, um, you know, just recently I was being talked to in a certain way that it made me wonder. And my reaction was, um, you know, professional and, and just wanted to get to the, to the point. And, but wondering why was I being treated that way? Is it because I'm a woman or, or because I'm Latina or, or both? Like, I wondered if it was my, a, a white male counterpart, if, if this person would have taken that tone with them. And, um, you know, the, the situation got better. Um, there was a, a different change of attitude because of the way I handled it. But it, it's, it's interesting because these are some of the things that we experience as Latinas. We have to be psychologists in a way and how to understand the situation and their situation and, um, and be confident in the space that we're in and saying, yes, I do know what I'm talking about here, you know? And it takes, it takes practice. It takes um, being in spaces like these 
and knowing that it doesn't only happen to you. And there's, again, there, there's more power in it as well. Yeah, and oh, also, yeah, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was say, I mean, it's a perfect forum because it's Illinois Tech, but you know, as we know, I mean, innovation is from challenging the status quo. So we, um, you know, exactly how, you know, Gabby, Claudette, and you, Alicia just said, I mean, we, we see things slightly differently. We may approach things differently. I mean, one of the projects that, that was mentioned in, in the intro about me, um, I mean, Claudette with the UNO schools, we worked together and I mean, it, it was brilliant. Things got done in nine months that would have taken a year and a half. It's about approaching it differently and working with each other differently. And that's where we we have to see it as, you know, we're change agents and you know, how, how do we do it um, and, and not follow the, the obvious path that's always being done and the process mm -hmm. that's always being done. And that, that, you know, as entrepreneurs, um, it is always about seeing things differently. And you're right, often others want us to do it the way it's always been done. And this is how we do it. And why are you doing it this way? Or why are you thinking this approach? And, and that's, I mean, that's what we do. And that, that's the best part is celebrating that. Um, and it's always great then at the end, like, the school that, that we worked on with all the awards and, and then saying, well, look, <laughs> it, it was done faster, better. So, so yeah, that's the, the pride part that comes with it, but, but we really are, we're innovators and change agents and, and it's, it's because of the fact that we do see things differently. Yeah. And so we do approach things differently mm -hmm. and look at it through a different lens. And I want to ask the three of you, um, I'm willing to bet that the three of you found love at the university and just, you know, your, your, your partners and we're all moms, we're all moms. And we're doing this because family is important. Our career is important. Our children are important. And talk to me a little bit about, you know, get a little personal. I know that the three, the three of you have really good uh, stories um, because it doesn't happen alone either. I hope I can say that, you know, it's just, it's like, we, it, it also depends on having a really good partnership and, and that support to make it happen. Um, Claudette, do you want to start? So I did meet my husband at IIT. We were actually, um, he was a year ahead of me in the Arch School of Architecture, and we were friends for, I want to say, two years before we started dating, and he was always very, you know, supportive. Um, he knew what my dreams were. He was actually, you know, with me when we founded Vamos, and when we were going, you know, door to door trying to find middle school students to come to IIT, he's always been supportive. He's... I'm, I'm the type of person who like will jump off of a mountain and like figure it out as I'm like falling, right? Like I'll find something to, to catch me, right? You and he, both. <laughs> <laughs> he's more of like the reserve side, right? So he's uh, he's sometimes like the, the voice of reason to be like, well, have you thought about this? Yes, I have. And here you go. So he helps me like structure my thoughts so that I could communicate it out. Um, We've been together since I, how old was I? I think like 20 years old. And um, we talked early on, we had a plan of, you know, when we're gonna have kids, what are we gonna do? He always um, supported my career. He supported, you know, the fact that I was going to grad school. We got married and the next week I started grad school. So we still haven't gone on our honeymoon, which totally sucks, right? We need to do that. Um, get on it. <laughs> yes, yes. And we have three sons now. And the journey has been challenging, right? Because he had to hear everything that was going on to to me in the industry, right? It can it can upset somebody. But instead of, you know, saying I'm going to handle it or whatever else, he always supported me and I handled it in my own way, which is also very empowering that he doesn't have to come in and you know protect me or you know solve the issues which is sometimes deemed like a male <clears throat> trait yeah he he loves home he loves cooking and and I don't know so much the cleaning part 
but he loves <laughs> he loves taking care of his family right like that's his that's his passion and his life and to me I couldn't have asked for a you know a more perfect partner because He's supporting me and allowing me to spread my wings and to not be in those stereotypical roles. Like he's never um, told me, you know, why, why am I the one, you know, doing the laundry? Why am I the one doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, and he will even like when I was pregnant with my sons, like he would, and I had business development meeting, he would be there in the parking lot waiting for me until, you know, I got out. So to have that support system has been really beautiful. And you can even see like the colors in the background of my office. Like he helped me, you know, like structure the the color scheme and everything else because he knew that I'm pulled in 20 different um, directions. He needs to sit me down and say, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to plan this. Mm -hmm. Like, Let's execute this. That's wonderful. What about you, Gabby? So the only love I found in college was the love of friends. Uh, (laughs) I did not meet my husband until I started working at McDonald's. Um, So we were friends for like seven years before we even started dating. We were trying not to date because we were colleagues and we're like, no, (laughs) eventually that went by the wayside. Um, But I couldn't have asked for a better partner. Um, You know, he was getting licensed. He's also in architecture. He also went to IIT, but we never met at IIT. Um, So he knew what he had to go through. So when I, you know, he, he wouldn't push me because I don't like to be pushed, but he would remind me of things. Um, and then when I finally said, you know, I'm ready, I'm like, okay, what do you need? You know, by that, by then I already had two babies, um, had to try and study for the exams after work, you know, can you handle the kids for, you know, an hour and a half before they go to bed, put them to bed so that I can study, um, you know, I can't cook tonight. Let's order something real quick. You, you know, you handle it. So he, 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 uh, he loves spending time with the kids, which is great for when I need to get something done. Softball coach, um, you know, for my daughter. So we, we, we balance each other out. Um, but you know, it, it was just that support knowing that he had my back. Uh, when I left our, uh, design group, at McDonald's and moved over to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. That was a big conversation that we had because I wasn't sure I wanted to to move over. Mm. I um, it was a growth opportunity from a stra- you know a strategic planning alignment standpoint for the company, but I was leaving something that I could do in my sleep. You know, mm. I was I was able to do my my job, deal with the kids pandemic, you know, everything that had to do with the pandemic, um, a comfortable spot for me, mm-hmm. but you know, he, again, he didn't push me cause I don't like to be pushed, but we would talk through all of, you know, this is a really great opportunity and, you know, here's what you should do. I think you should do it. Let me make my own decision. But he was there along the way, um, you know, holding my hand throughout the whole process. Um, new bosses, new, new colleagues, uh, all through the pandemic, which was, you know, scary having the kids at home all day. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we just balanced each other out. So I did marry an alum, but I didn't meet him there. (laughs) No, hey, I was wrong, but he's an architect and he did go to IIT. (laughs) We have about a little over 10 minutes. We'll have, um, Pat, answer the question as well, because you've been yeah. through I'm, I'm also married to an architect. <laughs> yes. um, so, so yeah, I've been married 32 years. I have two daughters, and um, we, we did meet in school in the study abroad program. And, you know, I mean, it, it, there are so many architect couples, um, so many of us, and obviously, 
at least in school, it's because we spend so much time <laughs> in the studio in the classroom. Um, but um, I always, I always tell um, you know younger female professionals, make sure you you are your partner is not threatened by what you're doing, and yeah. that they are supportive, and that they are as happy for you succeeding as they they themselves succeeding. I mean, I, I can't even stress how important that is. And I, I think often when women are young, you, you just have so much to, to think about and often they're supportive of their their spouse or their their boyfriend, and, but it has to be reciprocal so that that, yes. that it's really equal. And um, and so for us, we, we've always, you know, all the household things have been very equal. And um, it is as, as most of you know, with young kids, it's a juggling act. Sometimes most of our conversations were like, who's picking up whom at, at the school, who's doing this? Like it's, it's all about how you're getting through the day or the weekend and how you're going to get things done. So, um, so, and not only is my, my husband architect, but we a business partner also. So, um, you know, I started my office, it's going to be 30 years next year. Um, and then he joined, yeah, it's a long time. He joined, I think it's about 16 years ago. And we did not ever think, I mean, our goal was not to be a husband and wife firm. Um, it just happened because he had worked in facilities, at the University of Chicago and at Northwestern University and really wanted to get back into architecture. And um, so we, um, you know, I will say, I mean, it's challenging to be, have it be your spouse and your business partner and how you navigate that. But we, um, we, you know, we have our expertise in different areas. So it's a yin yang, but it is, um, it, it is very important. I know it's a cliche that it takes a village, but it really does. I mean, for, for myself, all of the, um, my daughter's grandparents, my in-laws and my parents would rotate to pick up our, our girls from school, get them lunch, get them started on homework. And that was such a calming relief for me, knowing that they were being taken care of. And I probably didn't even value it at the time as much as I do now and realizing how, what, how, how fortunate we were that we had that, um, yeah, you know, because uh, otherwise we would have been, you know, limited in time and and just that nervousness of having to, you know, pick them up from school and and getting them getting them ready. So, you know, our our two daughters, um, they, they also have a great relationship with their grandparents, and that's that's really really important. Um, so so all of it it does it takes it's you have to surround yourself by positive energy and um, your significant other has to has to be your best cheerleader, right? <laughs> so, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I bring it up because sometimes you wonder, um, you know, as when you're younger and you're look, you're with a partner and you're more supportive, oftentimes the female is supportive of her male, you know, on his mm -hmm. goals and everything. And that, which is why I asked the question, you, the three of you are very successful you're making things happen and you're mentors to others. And so yeah, it's yet another message that you read about in the book is that, you know, you, we come from uh, partnerships that are very supportive. They are very confident, you know, because they're, because it's a cultural thing too. Um, why aren't you cooking for your husband or why are you, you or our partners are, our husbands will hear, well, why are you letting her go out so much? You know, it's just like, because it's okay. You know, <laughs> they're doing what they love and they're pursuing something important. And, and so same thing for me, you know, um, you know, my husband, he went to architecture school and, um, Oh, he was a year ahead of me. We did not meet until years and years later. Um, never worked in architecture, but in nonprofits, and all of you know him. Um, he can cook a mean brisket and build a house, and I will eat that brisket, and I will live in that house, <laughs> too. <laughs> so he's not afraid to do any of that um, and let me do whatever I'm doing. Um, so it's so important to to have that, you know, when you're, when you're choosing this career that it is demanding in hours, um, but we do it because we love it. Um, I do have, okay, 
I have one lightning round of questions. Just gonna answer. Get Pat. Pat looks scared. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Is this one of those? Yes, no. Yes, no. <laughs> you just have to choose, and I just. I don't know if they're, let me see if they're fun or, um, um, look, I'm, I'm coming up with another one right now. They're just for fun, just to get to know you a little bit more. Um, I'll start with uh, Gabby. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Pat? Lots of coffee. <laughs> How about you, Claudette? Uh, tea with no caffeine. Um, Claudette, beer or wine? Neither. Neither. Pa <laughs> Pat is like lots of wine. <laughs> um, Gabby? When I was younger, it was beer. Now it's wine. Same with me. Um, Gabby, are you a night owl or an early bird? Neither. I don't like getting up in the morning and I can't stay up late at night anymore. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Pat? Night owl. <laughs> night owl. Claudette? Um, I don't like getting up early, but that's the best time for performance. Like, that's my peak time. Your peak time. And Cubs or White Sox, Pat? <laughs> White Sox. <laughs> Gabby? White Sox. <laughs> Claudette? White Sox. White Sox. That's <laughs> um, and last one, last one. Gabby, modernist or traditionalist? Mm, I'm a little bit of both. Okay. So what is it? Trans <laughs> transitional? <laughs> Pat? Absolute modernist. Claudette? Modernist. All right. See, nothing to be scared of. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so <clears throat> thank you for um, the this time. And I, I truly enjoy just getting to know you a little bit more. And, um, you know, for those that will be watching this, um, this video, um, read the book, you know, and share your story. More than anything, share your story because <laughs> there is somebody else out there that is going through what you're going through. And they need to know that if you made it, they can make it too, you know, no matter the circumstances. Do you, uh, the three of you, any of you have um, a closing comment? So I'll start with Gabby. No. Um, so thank you for listening to our stories. Um, and then for those students out there that might be listening, uh, find your support. Whatever that means, you know, sometimes it's not family, sometimes it's the, you know, the friends that you find. Um, I've been lucky to find great friends that support me in my, you know, career, in my life. Um, I treat them like sisters, um, you know, a, a partner that again, you know, we talked about, you know, being that support for, you know, for them and then family. Sometimes they don't understand what we're going through. Uh, but don't shut them out just because they don't understand. It's still bringing them along that journey. Thank you, Pat. Yeah, well, I, I just want to thank the Alumni Association because these, these kind of talks and uh, visibility for a, a book like this uh, can make such a, such a huge change institutionally. I mean, when, when institutions hear and understand um, it, it it really can can have bigger attraction. Uh, we've we thought of it as Chicago based, and then the state, and then nationally, and it's it's even expanding internationally. So the um, just the exposure and being able to uh, to hear all the stories of everyone it, it's so important. So just want to thank everyone, and especially you, Alicia. It's uh, it has it, it really you moved mountains. It's really hard <laughs> to do, but you but you did it. So thank you. Thank you. And before I I let it um, let Claudette close, I just wanted to say um, visit our website at arquitina.org. A R Q U I tina.org and there you will find a link to the book and just the, the book just shares a glimpse a glimpse of our experience in the profession um claudette i'll let you close out 
Well, I think it's important too. like, hopefully we can get our book into the IIT bookstore so other students can can see that that it, it exists and they can use it as a as a resource. Um, what I would say to um, current students or, you know, young professionals that are entering the profession, just know that you belong here. You know, it's your voice is vital. Your perspective is vital. I came from the community of Gage Park where other narratives are louder than the narratives that we're, we are all living. And we have to voice our experiences and we have to share that to know that there's others out, out there like us and that the next generation can hear our voice and know that they come from strong communities, communities that are you know moving the engineering world forward, moving the architecture world forward, it, you know, all these different professions that you rarely hear about that do exist within our community. And I want to thank IIT as well for the opportunity to bring all of us together to share this, um, our stories. And um, hopefully we can, you know, continue this conversation on campus, uh, you know, talk to the students, um, you know, feel free to, to reach out. I'm sure IIT knows how to find each and every, every you know, one of us. You know where to find Pat in Crown Hall. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you to to the four of you. Thank you to you all. Thank you for sharing your experiences, your history, your ambitions, and your stories, uh, and providing a great opportunity and great knowledge and experience, sharing your experiences to really inform the future. Uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Uh, take care.